Hello and welcome back to the Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the 06 Saab 93 and we're going to be replacing the seals and gaskets in the vacuum pump and the power steering pump. Let's move under the hood, which I already have opened here, and take a look at what we've got. So we're going to be on the right side of the engine bay, the driver's side if you will. And so we have a power steering pump here and it's interesting, I can, I've always tried to clean this up after oil changes. You can see how there's just a little bit of gunk there. Um, and so there's a seal over here, and there's a second seal between the reservoir and the actual pump. That's going to need to get cleaned up, and we're going to replace that. And then behind it is our vacuum pump, which goes to our brake booster, and we're going to be replacing, there's a gasket on that, uh, back over here. And so I've also noticed this a little bit of residual oil leaking out, you can see from the power steering pump. Maybe here you can see there's a little bit of a shiny surface on that hose down there. And so both of these have some seals that are known to go bad and today we're gonna to be replacing them. I've got some new parts here and let's go take a look at what the parts look like. Thanks to the power of the internet, I was able to order these parts pretty simply. Uh, and so we've got two washers or two uh, gaskets for the power steering pump. And we have this very specially shaped one here for our vacuum pump. Um, All together, these three gaskets cost me, uh, I think about $7, give or take. So it's actually really cost efficient to do this uh, repair. Uh, my vehicle has just shy of 50,000, I'm sorry, 150,000 miles on it. And it's showing the symptoms that it's time to replace these. Let's take a look at the tools we're gonna need to do this job today. So the tools are not, I don't think they're as bad as they look. Um, I think they're just generally some pretty basic tools. I don't think there's anything too special here. Uh, so the first thing that you're going to need, let's talk about the chrome stuff first. A 3 8 ratchet. I'm going to use a, like a sort of a stubbier one so I don't over torque some bolts. A 3 wrench 3 8 extension. I'm going to use a magnetic adapter. I've got a video about this on my channel here. So I can help fish in a couple bolts that will be invisible for me because they're going to be underneath either the vacuum pump or the power steering pump. We're gonna need a 19 millimeter socket. We're going to need a 13 millimeter socket. And we're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket here. So this is a semi-deep, you could probably get away with a uh, short with an extension. Uh, either way would work just fine. Uh, we're also gonna need, in the way of other hand tools here, a flat blade screwdriver, maybe a smaller flat blade screwdriver for trying to remove the gaskets. You might need a small fine pick or a larger pick for, try, again, trying to remove some gaskets, a light to be able to see what you're doing. You're going to want a whole bunch of shop towels for cleaning and trying to clean up your two pumps. You're also going to need to do that, some degreaser and or brake clean. If you're using brake clean or degreasers or anything like that, always make sure you got your safety glasses on. You may want gloves so your hands don't end up all nasty and dirty. Uh, you're also going to need about a quart uh, of power steering fluid to be able to replace. You also may want a small hammer and you also may want a hose clamp pliers. You could probably get away with just some vice grips instead if you don't have a pair of hose clamp pliers. These are locking ones that are fantastic. You're also going to want some wire brushes for being able to clean up your pumps. You also may want a small knife to be able to deal with some gasket scraping and you're also going to want a 3 8 torque wrench to be able to properly torque your pumps into place. And so with those tools, oh, and the other tool that you're gonna need is gonna be a, you know, like a gallon milk jug or a juice bottle and a turkey baster for emptying out your power steering pump. And you're also gonna want something that you can grease up your new gaskets with. I'm gonna use a super loop stuff. You can get this at Harbor Freight pretty cheap. Works pretty well. It's even food grade, which I think is kind of interesting. So if you're, if you work on like school kitchen or industrial kitchen stuff, I think you can use that there. Don't quote me on that, but that stuff's got some interesting background and that company makes some interesting products as well. So then the first step to loosen this is gonna to be to remove uh, this module here on the side. This is a 10 millimeter socket. And we have a couple screws there that we're gonna remove. We're gonna clean these all up later before we put it back together. This is just a, I'm using a 10 millimeter semi-deep here for the next step. And 
And with those bolts out, we've got our module. This helps with, this is our, goes for our fuel injection. See if we slide that back, work that around well enough, we can remove the module. And we're gonna clean this down with a cloth. You can see there's a little bit of oil on the side there. Again, this is why we're doing the job. So be careful with the wiring harness for that. And then we've got a vacuum line on top that we're gonna to have to remove. And there's gonna be another bolt here on the top and the bottom that we're gonna take off and that's gonna be it. So I'm removing this one. If I do this right, I should just be able to push this in with my hands just like that to remove that vacuum line. So that comes off pretty easy like that. And let me bring the camera around and we've got a bolt here on top and one at the very bottom that we have to remove. But we're gonna put a, a, a little shop towel underneath there because there's gonna be some oil that's gonna drip off because this vacuum pump is driven by the camshaft. So now to remove the final two bolts, I've got a shop towel here laid out so I can set the parts down. Then I've got a 13 millimeter socket and a short extension mounted to my ratchet. So I should be able to clear these vacuum lines here. Be careful with those. You don't wanna damage those in the process. In my opinion, this you probably need an extension rather than a deep well. It's just, I think it's just a touch too long for a deep well to do the job well. Pun not really intended. You also notice my red rag down at the bottom there to catch any residual Oil is gonna drip off because this is driven by the camshaft. There is oil that may come out. And so here's our first bolt, put that into our parts tray. And now we've got the other bolt down below, which is almost blind to get to. So that's gonna be the hardest part of this is to get my ratchet down here to find the almost blind bolt. First thing is the bracket. Here's the bracket and you can see the oil leak onto the bracket. That's obviously gonna get cleaned up before we put that back in. And then down here is our pump. And so as the pump comes out, you can see the way it came off there, the gasket did not come off with it. I see the gasket is separate here. We're gonna make sure we get the hole of the gasket. Yep, there's the hole of the gasket. We got our cloth down there to go catch any oil drip. I'm gonna move that into a better spot there to keep that clean. And now let's go get these parts cleaned up so we can put this back together. All right, so to clean this up, I've got some shop towels. Just gonna to use this to get up some of the oil. The gasket here, Actually, so relatively pliable, but there's definitely fluid leaking out. So I suspect that maybe somehow it wasn't tight enough or there was something issue. It actually feels like it's a good gasket and it didn't break. So that's a little surprising. I got the new part, so we're gonna replace it anyway. Be careful you don't leave any debris in the pump to otherwise damage it. You wanna keep this nice and clean. If you look, there's a little bit of an oil screen there. And on the outside here, we can see this is a French made part, uh, Pierberg. And then now with some brake clean and a little more elbow grease, we'll get this cleaned up and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done scrubbing it. Here's the one that came out of it and we can notice the difference. Whereas this one here is not sticking up at all. If I push the backside here all the way down I went able to get it back out again without damaging it. So this seal here has is no seal at all. In fact, I may have just popped it down there. So pardon me while I have to pick this out. With the assistance of my brake clean and a little bit of engine degreaser, I was able to clean up the bracket, get that looking as close to uh, clean as I can, get as much of the debris off of that, the oil and the grime, cleaned up the bolt head so all the bolts look nice and clean, scrubbed up the vacuum pump, be nice if that could have got a little shinier, but that looked like that was about as good as it was gonna get with a few wire brushes. 
and pulled out Q-tips and a couple of toothpicks to try to clean it up. So I feel pretty good about where it's at. Uh, you see this big pile of rags here, turn in the little pump here, squirt out a bunch of oil. And so caught that just to try to purge it out and make sure everything all comes out nice and clean. And so now comes a part of the new gasket. And looking at the old gasket further, it looks like it just, it sits uh, short of the cavity that it goes in, or should we sit slightly proud so that it actually can uh, help seal up this up to the side of the engine. So with the brand new gasket in my hand, I'm gonna take a little bit of the super lube because you need to kind of prep this gasket here so it'll be able to not be dry and cracked. We wanna get it uh, greased up here. And so I'm just gonna use this. This is good for plastic or rubber uh, gaskets like this and others. This will help just to increase the longevity of this and make sure it's, not, it's pliable, it doesn't dry out. And we get a nice, good seal off of this brand new gasket. These gaskets are one of those weird things that I don't know that you can run to your local neighborhood auto parts store and go and find these. So in the event of trouble, you know, it's good to be able to make sure we're doing all these steps correctly and following a good procedure on this. And then I'm gonna set this after it's all lubed up there into the cavity on the pump. And this is sitting now proud of it, as you can hopefully see, so that it'll actually seal, because the other one was sitting short. Before proceeding too far, let's see if I can get you down, and there you can see that mating surface. I'm gonna wipe that out with a shop towel just to make sure it's clean and free of debris. There is gonna be some oil there coming out of the engine or the crankcase. This vacuum pump is powered by the camshaft. So now with that surface cleaned up, I've got the pump. Now because there's a hex on here, it's gonna fit into the backside of the engine and because I've rotated this when I cleaned it, I may have to kind of tinker with this to get it to fit in just right. And remember, we're gonna have this brass side is the top. So we've got a bolt hole at 12 and the other bolt hole at six o'clock. And so this has to get fished down between the lines here. There we go. There's that in place. You saw I had to give that a rotation of, I don't know, that was probably about, uh, from about three o'clock back to 12 o'clock counterclockwise in my case. Obviously that will vary specifically for you. And now comes the bracket. Again, being careful with all the lines down here. And when I get that approximate where it goes, I'm gonna put in my top bolt here to hold everything together by hand. A couple turns. Eventually we're gonna get out a torque wrench and we've got a torque spec we've gotta think about for holding all this together. But we're gonna start this loosely just to get everything lined up as we've gotta line up this bracket and the pump together. And then when that started by hand, I'm gonna come back and use my socket and extension to kind of get it the rest of the way seated here preliminarily before I think about torquing this to spec. I'm gonna come back, back up at the top, tighten this one a little bit further. Now I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna go get my torque wrench now with my torque wrench set to 18 foot-pounds, I'm gonna go ahead and try to tighten this down the final bit to get our torque spec. There we go, that popped. Now time to repeat the process on the top.
I'm going to start by feeding the extension and the socket on first, torque wrench on second. Remember we're going to 18 foot-pounds. The top one is significantly easier to do. There we go. So now we've got the vacuum pump put back on. And now we can go ahead and take our vacuum line here that we clipped off earlier. We can snap that back into place like that. And then now we got to put the module back on. Now the module does not have a torque spec as far as I can find. And so I believe that just means we're going to make it nice and firm and tight. And at this point, I'm going to pull my little shop rag out underneath there. I don't want to leave that in the car. Start the bolts by hand before coming back with the socket. I'm using a semi-deep just to help me get around the back side of this module over there. Run it in by hand, and now we'll put a ratchet onto it and get it tightened up. You don't want to over-tighten this because you do have this plastic module here. You definitely don't want to crack. There we go, that feels tight enough. Now I'm going to reattach the cable here. And as I push that back down, it'll seal it back in place. And then there we go, now we got our vacuum pump cleaned up and regasketed. So that's the end of that part. Now for part two, we're going to move on to the power steering pump. And I'm just going to take my shop towel here and just kind of wipe this down here because we're going to have to pump out uh, what's in our reservoir here. Now to remove the power steering fluid, I'm going to be using an empty milk jug here. This is just a one gallon milk jug and a turkey baster. Remove our cap. Set that aside. I'm going to put down a little uh, rag right there just to keep fluid from coming out. And all we need to do here is empty the reservoir. So this will turn into a, it's a small amount of a power steering flush. So with that set aside, I'm going to put the lid back on. And then now we've got a couple of things here to concern ourselves with. Number one, we're over here on the side is your power steering uh, if we call a discharge line, and over here is a return line, and so we're going to need to remove these. So this is going to come off with of a bolt, and this is going to come off with a pair of hose clamp pliers, and we're going to need, particularly on this line here, to be able to kind of hold it out of the way with some clamp off pliers just to be able to keep the fluid from getting everywhere. Uh, I don't know that you can see behind here, and move the light, maybe it'll make it a little bit easier. Right down here, I can definitely see some uh, fluid leak there that I want to be able to clean up that I hope to be able to address with this fix or rebuild or whatever you want to call it. And we also have a sensor here at the top that we're going to have to be able to remove as well. So this removed the 19 millimeter socket. Move over here and we're going to get a pair of hose clamp pliers so we can remove that hose and set it aside. So now I'm going to use my ratcheting hose clamp pliers just to grab right onto the side of that hose clamp. And with the hose clamp backed off, I'll take the hose clamp wires and set them, set them aside. And then now I will have to work on getting this off here, not damaging the power steering reservoir. Being careful that obviously there could be fluid coming out. And that is full, full of fluid up to the top. So we'll set that aside like that. We got our rag down, and now we're gonna remove the screws on either side, top and bottom of the power steering pump. There is some fluid coming out of the bottom, so we'll get our rag down there to catch that. And now on to the 13 millimeter socket for being able to remove the pump from the camshaft. 
top bolt. And then there's a bolt down here on the bottom. It's going to be a little bit, it's actually not too bad to get to. And then that one's broke free. And now by hand using the extension, I can remove the bottom bolt. And it looks like that bolt, I dropped that bolt there, so I'll get that when I get the rest of the pump out. We'll get the top bolt here. And we'll pull this off. And I'm going to put this bolt back in here just to kind of seal up that reservoir just a bit. And now this should be able to come right off of the camshaft just like that. And now keep in mind there is that open seal at the bottom. And now we're going to take this over to the bench and we're going to get this cleaned up and inspect what we've got. So now with the pump on the bench, we can see there's still been some more power steering fluid that's been draining out of this here. We want to make sure we keep the inside of this pump clean. It's interesting if you look at the bolt here, you can see there's a hole on the side, on four sides of this here, for fluid to drain through. But we start looking at the business end, we've got, we've got a seal here, and we've got a seal here on the inside that we're going to replace. And we're also going to replace the seal that goes between the tank and the pump. It's very easy to see how dirty and grimy that is. And that's probably the seal that's the most at fault here, but we're going to replace all the seals, gaskets, whatever you want to call them here. Uh, Cause if we're taking this off, we might as well replace them all. And the price is cheap enough that there's really no reason not to replace them all and to only replace one because the time to do one is the time to do them all. And so then we're gonna spend some time, we're gonna get this pump cleaned up here before we get our gaskets out. I feel like I've made some progress on trying to get this pump cleaned up and some of the grease off of it. Before I can kind of finish the job, I need to separate the reservoir from the pump itself, which is held on by two clips. There's these metal clips at the top and the bottom here. I'm going to take a pick and try to just lift up on this little clamp here so then I can slide the clamp off. Just getting into it is the trickiest part. It might take you being creative or trying to come up with the right pick to get in there to do it or the right little flat bladed screwdriver to be able to pop it open. Is it a flat bladed screwdriver or is it like a little mini pry bar? You tell me in the comments below. All right, there's one of the clips. You can see how just gunked up that is with crud. And we've got one on the other side here to be able to get on the bottom. more tugging and that clip will come off and then now here is the big moment that you can see we've got some more fluid in there I'm gonna go dump the fluid into my uh, now that I got everything exposed here dump that into my tank here and there's a gasket that uh, let's see where is it here it is right here that we're gonna replace with a new one. And we got some more cleaning to do now, obviously. I'm gonna go dispose of this and keep scrubbing this up here. Now I can get to all the little nooks and crannies. I gotta make sure I pay careful attention. I don't get anything inside the pump here because I don't wanna get other contaminants in there. So I'm gonna plug that with a paper towel. Uh, so while I scrub around it, I don't actually scrub a glob of grease or this gunk into it. All right, with some editing here, I've got my parts scrubbed down and cleaned up as good as they're gonna get. I know it's not perfect. So then I'm gonna take my gasket that I got and put some super lube on it just to make sure it's all nice and soft and pliable.
like that. This is going to go on to my tank just like that and it'll kind of snap into place. Should get a nice fit. And then I'm going to go over here and push these together and they push together very nicely. So with my parts put together here, I need to take my clips that I cleaned up and put those into the container here to put it together. Uh, pay attention here that these little barbs on the clip means they're going to a little barb here. So this is going to go in like this. I'm going to start one side. I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm going to come back with a hammer and get a hammer so I can lightly tap these down to get it all to seal up. I'm going to use my small ball peen hammer. This is an eight ounce one here to just gently tap these clips into place. And we'll need to keep going until that barb gets fully set and this clip is fully seated. There we go, that one's fully set. See that clip is now sprung in. There we go, now that's fully seated. So now we got our pump assembly put back together. And now we're gonna wipe down my hands or wipe this down again, but we've got two more gaskets to go to replace this. We've got this outer gasket here and it's interesting looking at mine that mine actually has this weird like little hard rough spot here. If you can see this right here, I'm using my small pick here to pull the seal up. And you can see there's this weird defect here on it that is really strange where it's like an excess rubber on it. So I don't know where the seal is, but I almost consider that to be a defective gasket because of the way that that's kind of bubbled up there. It looks like it was molded incorrectly. That's kind of annoying. And then we have an inner seal that we're going to pick out of here as well. This one here is going to be the harder of these two to remove. And so since mine's being a little bit stubborn here coming out, I'm going to use my razor blade here to kind of do a little bit of a destructive removal of this. I'm not a huge fan of having to destroy gaskets to get them out if I can help it, but I also don't want to destroy the metal on the outside of here either. So I'm going to do this kind of gingerly to get this out and I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like with that seal out. With some ca careful picking and prying, I got the seal out. And if we look at the seal, you can see how there's kind of a channel that goes down into the pump. That's gonna be important here. We got a little bit more oil that came out, but pay attention to the orientation of that seal with the channel going inside the pump. Now I'm gonna clean up the oil that we got coming out after we remove the seal. There we go, with that cleaned up, I've got my new gasket here in the baggie that I'm gonna get out. And my new gasket, you can see there is the little channel that's gonna go back down. So I have to pay attention to the orientation of this whenever we go to seat this. I'm gonna use my little super lube just to grease up this gasket here to make sure it is ready to, uh, that it's not too dry and that the rubber will last because this will help prevent the mixing or contamination of engine oil mixing in with your power steering fluid, which are different viscosities, so we don't want to do that. There we go, there's that all lubed up there. And then that presses in here. We may need to use a pressing tool, such as a socket to help to get that the seat all the way. But with that being lubed up there, it looks like this might just press in just like that pretty nicely. So that, that makes me happy that I don't have to do that. And then I'm gonna replace this gasket here, which I think was really one of my big faults and why I had to do this job in the first place, was the way it's just thicker in that one spot there. That's, that's a little annoying. I don't know why someone let a faulty part through the line, but in any case, we've got new parts and we're gonna fix it. I mean, I guess it lasted for 150,000 miles, or almost 150,000 miles, so I guess I can't complain too much, but still. So let's take a look at our new gasket. Our new one does not contain that same defect. I'm gonna put a little bit of the super lube on here as well. Just to grease this thing up to make sure, on both sides to make sure this is all soft and pliable. And we get that nice, good seal that we want out of the gasket. 
Do the same thing whenever you're changing the oil with the gasket on your oil filters. And There we go. And that's just kind of press fits into place there. And now we're ready to go take this back over to the car and install our rebuilt, I don't know if you can use the word rebuilt or not, uh, power steering pump. So back over at the vehicle, I'm going to get ready to place the pump. And so I'm going to go ahead and remove the return bolt, feed that through the return line, and bring that back up. And then I'm going to have to line up this bolt into the camshaft, which felt like I got it right there. And then get this return line bolt and something like that. We'll come back and get those to final tighten this later. I'm going to start with this top bolt here because obviously getting these bolts lined up here is what's going to tell me that I'm in alignment with the camshaft. Okay, that's at least close there. We got to get the bolt at the bottom, which is the hardest one. I'm not really sure I can show you that on camera. Except for maybe you saw it earlier before I put the pump back on. To help make the process of putting in the bottom bolt easier, I've got a magnetic extension in here. So I can put my bolt in here and the magnet, magnet will help hold the bolt on so I can fish this in. The slightly longer bit here using the magnet uh, to my benefit. Since I have to do this kind of blind. And now using the torque wrench set to 16 foot pounds. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up to spec. There we go. That clicks. I'm take that off. And now we're going to repeat the process here on top. I took the magnetic adapter out just to give myself the extra space. There we go. I'm confident we got that on top. I might double check the bottom again. Now that we got the top in place. Yep, that is good. I just want to double check that without the adapter in there. And then now we can push on our sensor connector there. That's a piece of cake. We've got one more bolt to do. And that's going to be this bolt here. Just going to get that hand tight first, like that. And then now we're going to use a 19 millimeter socket with a torque wrench set to 24 foot pounds. There we go. There's our torque. And we should be good. Now the final step, maybe it's not really the final step, but we've got to reattach that power steering line that we took off earlier. I'm going to press that back onto that barb there. Now we're going to use our hose clamp tool to be able to move that hose clamp back into place. And just like that, our hose clamp is where it belongs. And then the final step is to now to add power steering fluid back to the reservoir because we emptied a bunch out. Uh, we're going to need that, do that before we even think about starting our car. We don't want this pump to run dry. That would be very bad. And we wouldn't have power steering fluid. So plenty of reasons not to do that. Pay attention to your details. And also check, remember your cap has a dipstick on it for your level. Make sure you get the level correct. Don't overfill it. Don't underfill it. And now for the power steering fluid, I'm just going to push down and remove the cap. Got a towel set aside here to be able to catch it. And I'm going to be adding, I'm going to be using the AMSOIL power steering fluid. And that should be close and just about right. And with that, that should wrap up the job. The final step will be just a little bit of maintenance. I'm not going to show on camera of needing to double check your power steering pump fluid a couple times before you really drive too far. Because we dried out the pump, some of this fluid is going to get sucked into the pump and get held there and we're going to lose it out of our reservoir. So just pay attention to that. You probably will have to come back and top off your power steering fluid before you're really, really done. But all in all, uh, what you just saw here on video, I cut out a fair bit of the cleaning. You know, you're looking at about two hours, give or take. And it's really not that bad once you've got all the parts in hand. And if you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. 
Come back for more great videos. I've got a Saab 93 maintenance playlist on my channel that I'll see if I can put a card to somewhere for that. And have a great day. Bye.